So you're thinking of building your own project bike? We have some tips for you right now. Number one tip is make sure that you can afford to do this uh, and what your time frame is going to be. Building these bikes isn't very cheap, typically. So, and we're mainly talking about two strokes here. On the bikes, the cost of the bikes is so high right now. Sometimes bikes, if you're gonna spend $2,000, say for a bike, for a 2005 Yamaha or a 2005 RM250, if you're gonna spend $2,000 on that bike and then put $5,000 into it, you can really quickly see the math doesn't work very well as far as buying a brand new YZ250, right? So you wanna be careful on that math and really pay attention and maybe list out each item as you go about. And if you email me, I'll be glad to send you an itemized list of this build. It doesn't show prices, but it shows everything we did. It'll show you all that and that'll help you out as you go and you go, you could kind of pick which things you have to do. Knowing suspension can be a thousand to $1,200 to do a loan. You could have, you know, anywhere a thousand to 1200 in the engine you, real quickly and then wheels, it adds up really quickly, so be careful. Project bikes with older four strokes, out the window, two strokes. Next tip, if the bike is sentimental to you, it was your dad's, it was your first bike, it was your uncle's bike, whatever, then cost might not matter to you as much. It doesn't have to make sense. With the crazy times we're in right now, used bikes have gotten a lot more expensive, so buying a good bike to use as a donor to start with can be difficult. So you wanna be careful how much you have into it. Most of these builds are going to range, the cheapest you're going to typically do one is $3,000. Up to $6,000 in that range is where I think you can kind of be. So you got to do the math to decide if it's worth it for you. Next is the engine. Engine is first to tear down and assess to make sure that this is going to be worthwhile. So you'd want to tear into it and check the cylinder. If it needs a new cylinder or it needs to be replated, you have to figure that cost is pretty heavy. That could help your decision process. Next, you're going to look at the transmission, look at those shift forks, get everything inspected because a lot of these parts aren't available anymore on these older builds. And that's what a lot of guys are looking to do is old two-stroke builds. So you want to make sure that those parts are available and weigh out all the costs of the engine before you fully get committed and started. Then after we've done the engine inspection, I would inspect the suspension. We've had suspension hold us up on projects numerous times. The forks are the big one. Uh, the forks are damaged internally or on the outer tubes or inside to where you need new tubes. A lot of these parts on these older suspension components aren't available any anymore. And any used parts you find off of eBay or wherever are going to be in similar condition. We've bought in used forks. We spent $300 on a set of forks before. They looked good on the outside, got torn into them, and they weren't much better than what we had. So you want to be really careful to get the suspension inspected by a good technician to make sure that it's all rebuildable. So after you've gone through the suspension and engine and you've decided you're going to continue on, then I would look at doing the frame. Get the frame inspected to make sure there's nothing that needs to be welded, anything like that before you paint it. You can get it sandblasted and just simply paint it yourself with like uh, spray cans. You know, some guys will actually do that. But if I was going through this extent, I would at least get it professionally painted and preferably powder coated. And when you get it powder coated, it's best to make sure it's a reputable shop that can tape everything off and not leave tape in any of the holes, the threaded holes, or any of the areas that are going to cause you clearance issues later. You'll be filing and sanding and making sure all your grounds are good. Hey, thanks for watching the video so far. Don't forget if you're going to shop for new parts for your dirt bike at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, click on our link in the video description below. Okay, so now that you're further along this building, you're fully committed, you're going to want new bearings or at least to re-grease all of your components if they're still good. Most of the time on these builds, we need all new bearings and seals. So Pivotworks All Balls has full kits. We do uh, new bearings and seals for the triple clamps, swing arm, linkage pieces. All those pieces should be fully new. Now, if you're going to do those pieces, then it might be a good idea to clean them up fully before you do it. Vapor blasting has become all the rage as of late. A lot of people want to vapor blast their, all their pieces of their, their engine and all that. Um, if you vapor blast a complete engine, it's a little easier if you're going to tear it down afterwards. You can't vapor blast an engine and not expect to tear it down. Those little granules get all in there and you'll have to tear it down. So we like to vapor blast it together before we start and then get it apart. Uh, you can do it when it's all apart 
and then you'll need every bearing out of the cases. If you do it this way, you don't have to do that uh, per se. So I would vapor blast the cases, and there's, in everybody's town now, there's a vapor guy. If you go searching, you'll be able to find somebody uh, local to you that does it. In Southern California here, we got uh, Sano Metal Fishing in Florida, there's Moto Blasters, and there's quite a few others that we've posted about that are really good as well. Also, many of those shops will do Cerakoting, and that's a, it's a, uh, it's a process. You can actually do it at home, but it's easier to have a shop do it. You can do some of the little components on your bike. Uh, here we've done the throttle tube on this bike, the throttle housing on this bike, and you can see how good some of these little pieces come out. Last tip would be looks. If you're building a bike, the, and one of the least expensive things is the most visible is plastic. In this case, we got a tank. We didn't have to get a tank. The stock tank wasn't terrible, but we wanted to go for a really good look here since we're building this for a magazine uh, and we want it to look amazing. So you want to go for the look, a full plastic kit. On this bike, we updated it. A lot of people want to have updated plastic. I'm not totally convinced that, that this plastic looks terrible, you know, the older style. And so we, we went ahead and just put a new style front fender on. So updating the plastic, but getting new plastic is gonna give you that look when you're all finished with your project build. Last thing is hardware. So when you assemble the engine and the chassis, it's nice to have brand new bolts. We use spec bolts and you can see them on this bike. They're all over here. It's nice to have new hardware everywhere. Um, now the bolts that go through the swing arm, the linkage, the engine mounts, the hangers for the engine, all those are stock bolts and those can all be cleaned up really well just by, um, you can get them, you know, through his scrubbing. We just done them with degreaser and then scrubbing bubbles and our own Scotch-Brite, clean them all up that way. And those you can do, and those are very expensive bolts to buy new. So we prefer just to clean all those up. And then of course we got new chain and sprockets new tires now wheels are a big cost if you're going to get these wheels are actually the stock hubs that have been uh, blasted new bearings put in and all built and so it did cut down the cost of buying complete new wheels um, high-end wheels so these are uh, it's a really nice setup here on this bike last tip is as you're going over the bike you want to inspect to make sure there's no other missing components that are unobtainable um, air boxes are, are pieces and air boxes, air boots, and the intakes into the engine are all pieces that are getting hard and hard to find because they've dried out and they're not available from the OEM. So you want to watch out and be careful of that. To go along with that new plastic is graphics. And you can have simple graphics that are retro style, or in our case, Decal Works is making us up a full kit to go along with all the companies that we worked with for this build. So my last bit of advice is Take your time, even I have a lot of access to discounted parts uh, for, for these builds and it can take a long time. So most of these builds take us anywhere from six to 12 months because we're still doing other things and working and riding and having a normal life. And so if one takes you a year or two, not a big deal. Uh, it's not gonna go out any less out of style. So really fun on these builds and just take your time as you go through it. Another bit of advice is take photos as you're taking the bike down. Uh, that's really important is take photos as you're taking it down. That'll help you when you go to reassemble it. So hopefully that helps you out when you decide to make your build on your bike. On X Off-Road, know where to go with the number one GPS app. Access 500,000 miles of trails and roads, open dates and public lands. The elite version even shows landowners and property boundaries. Download the On X Off-Road app. To save 20%, use the discount code DBTV1.